Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as we celebrate Prayer Emphasis Month. Our theme is, is as, and when they prayed, Acts chapter 4, verse 31. As I prepared for uh, my topic today, I thought about this commercial that airs on television. It's a life insurance commercial. And there is a tagline in that commercial that caught my attention one day. The gentleman gave many, many benefits of this particular life insurance, and he said, but remember the three P's of life insurance. Now that piqued my interest. So I stopped in my tracks and I gave him my full attention. Then he said, price, price, price. I was, I was stunned, but I thought, how simple. Price, price, price. I came by today to tell you the three P's of prayer. Pray, pray, pray. Now most of us think that Many people, anyway, think that in praying, you're just asking God for stuff. You, 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 we treat God like he's our cosmic bellhop. But really, I looked at some of the categories of prayer. There's an acronym, A-C-T-S. The A stands for adoration. There are prayers of adoration where you just heap up good things about God, who he is, how splendid he is, how marvelous he is. Then there's the C in X. The, the C stands for confession. When you go to God and you confess your sins, you agree with God that what you're engaged in is sinful and goes against God. Then there's the T, thanksgiving, where we come before God with thanksgiving. And finally the S, that category is supplications, where we can go to God and ask anything that we will, and he'll hear us if we're in him and he's in you. Now, I looked at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. When I read it in the King James Version, it said, pray without ceasing. That's the whole scripture, pray without ceasing. When I looked in the New International Version, it said, pray continually. I remember as a young Christian, how this scripture bothered me. I thought in my mind, how could you pray without ceasing? How can you pray continually? Through much prayer, I realized though, that it's not possible to spend all of our time on our knees. But it is possible to have a prayerful attitude at all times. This attitude is built upon acknowledging our dependence on God, realizing his presence within us, and determining to obey him fully. Then we will find it natural to pray frequently, spontaneously, and we'll learn to pray short, quick prayers. Perhaps if we talk to him more often throughout the day, we'll have less to tell him at night after a long, hard day at work and we fall asleep on our knees. I'm just saying. But my mother taught me early in life that prayer is the key and faith unlocks the door. Hebrews 11 and six says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. My brothers and my sisters, if you pray, you must believe. My mother used to say to me all the time, she said, if you're gonna worry, don't pray. But if you've prayed, don't worry. I'll tell you a little story about my friend and her grandson. 
he was having some struggles in school and was faced with this, this test. I'm not sure if it was the STAR test or what. But he went home that afternoon and he said, Granny, we need to pray. And she asked him what the problem was, and so they prayed that night. The next morning, they got, got up, get ready for school. And little Jeremy says, come on, Granny, I'm ready to go. She said, wait, Jeremy, we got to pray. Jeremy looked at her and he said, no, Granny, we did that last night. It's time to go. I want to have that same childlike faith. Put it in God's hand. Scripture tells us to cast our cares on him, for he careth for us. That's 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 7. Pray around your grandchildren. Pray around your children. Pray walking through the house. Let other people hear you pray. And then when it comes your turn, don't panic. I can remember when my sister was diagnosed with breast cancer. I said, let's pray about it and you'll be all right. And the three girls, we prayed and I told her, don't worry, sis, you're going to be all right. Well, she is, thank God. A few months later, I got a letter in the mail from my doctor saying, you need to come back in and redo that mammogram. I said, Lord, I got cancer and I'm going to die. <laughs> if you're going to pray, you have to believe what you're praying about. Once your children hear you praying and they see your walk, how you walk before them, that will grow them up. You know, a lot of times we don't acknowledge our children's concerns and fears. I think about our teenagers. We talk about them and their puppy love and we discredit what they are feeling and going through. But that puppy love to the puppies is a big thing. So we have to take them, teach them to go to God with their hurts, with their hearts, and with their health. I look at my little grandson, he's three years old, and he started out praying just a prayer. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. God bless mommy, daddy, mama, papa. And now he's all the way up to the new faith choir. He's praying for the band. He's praying for Sister Charisma. He's praying for firefighters and ambulance, uh, uh, people in ambulance. We pass a wreck, he say, mama, let's pray. So if we teach them the three P's of prayer, Pray, pray, pray. Then we'll see a big difference. My brothers and sisters, in my closing, I have a reminder on my refrigerator that says, pray hardest when it's hardest to pray. Remember the three P's of prayer. Pray, pray, pray. God bless you. Let us go to God. Thank you, Lord, for this time of fellowship. I pray right now for those listening to learn to develop an attitude and a spirit of prayer where we can remain in constant commune with you all day, every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.